Good morning, friends. It is Monday, which means it is day one of the reading rush. I started off the reading rush by going for a run, rushing around, and where you and I are going to ignore the fact that I have bruised my nose somehow, pretend that that isn't here. <laughs> Uh, so the only book on my physical TBR for the Reading Rush that was also on my uh, Bingo Picks My TBR month thing was this one, the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. Uh, I'm not really in the mood for that one just yet, so I think I'm going to start with my Cozy Mystery, which was my pick for the prompt where you have to sit in a corner and read... It's not in a corner. Sit in the same place and read the book. And then when I finish that I'll probably pick up this one because those two I think are the main priorities for me this week. But I really do want to get round to Sense and Sensibility and then I think these two are both from Non-Human Perspectives and they both have purple on the cover. Uh, so these are kids books so they should be easy to read in a day, I'm hoping. Alright so it is the end of day one of the reading rush and I have read exactly one page of book. Oh yeah. <laughs> I have, however, been doing a lot of writing towards my project for the month, which is to finish editing my first novel, or my first fantasy novel, um, Servant of the Snake God. I changed its title while querying to see if um, I get more interest that way, and I have been getting more interest that way, which means I need to keep calling it that, but its real name is still in my head. Like, it has been there a long time, right? Anyway. Seven of the Snake God, I'm editing it, I'm editing it so hard, right now I am rewriting entire chapters, which is a lot of energy, and no reading has been done really, so, but I did get some goodies in the mail, so I just wanted to show you those really fast. So the first one is oh, the only bookish related one, and it is a little uh, bookmark that says I love you to the moon and back, and it's two rabbits, and this is a story that my dad used to read to me quite regularly as a kid, and he just popped it over to me, for me, because he loves me. And let's be fair, it's better than using the cut-out Coke can that I've previously been using as a bookmark, so... Speaking of that, the rest of the presents are kind of like cross-stitch slash magnet related. So the other thing that my dad sent me was this little miniature um, landmark from Harrogate. So this is kind of like one of the big attractions from where I'm from, and I can just sew this up. It's really sweet of him. And then the rest of the presents I bought for myself. So I got this cute little uh, needle minder that looks like a fish. I don't know how well it's showing up on camera but it's a fish, and then it just holds your needles for you. So if I retrieve one of them, as an example, just boop. Which means that they won't rust into the fabric or bend the fabric and you won't lose them. Because your little fish will just take care of them for you. I mean, this is a spiky ass, spiky ass fish. For my Stark project, I got another one that looks like a raven. And then for my Stark project, I also got this beautiful dragon egg, which is kind of like green and blue. And I'm about to start work on my Reading Rush cross stitch. So I'm gonna pop it, I think, just here, at the top of the witch. Or possibly just here along the side of the witch, not sure, but yeah. So, lots to do, lots of reading to do. None of it has been done yet. And, uh, wish me luck. Good morning, it is now day two of the readathon, and I actually did manage to read a little bit. So I am about halfway through the Potato, no, the Guernsey Literary and Potato Pure Pie Society, and I am loving it. So I didn't know before, but this is actually told, at least the part I'm reading, in letters from and to an author who's thinking about writing uh, a book. And I'm just, I love all of the characters, they're so well done, because you're getting letters from them, you are seeing sort of like their personalities shine really well. The only thing I would say is that it is very confusing to keep all of the different people separate in your head, but I am so enjoying this, and I am so far have only read it on this couch, so technically it could count for my read in one place, but I, you know, have to read a different book for that. Also, cross-stitching progress. Stitching progress. Uh, this is coming along quite nicely. It is upside down. It goes this way up. But this is coming along quite nicely. It's a little bit too green, I think. It should be a tiny bit more teal or blue. But it's looking really good for the reading rush, so yeah. I'll take a picture of that.
so I finished it. It is 10.30 a.m. I think it's probably more like 11 a.m. now. Oh my gosh, it's so sad. I think the saddest part was after like reading about the authors and their story was the saddest part but the book was so beautiful and so heartwarming and the whole thing was told in letters and I loved it and I felt like those were real people that I was like discovering and if you haven't read this and you're a little bit intimidated I would absolutely recommend like a hundred percent this was a beautiful wartime literary tale about the occupation of Guernsey essentially and the people the unique individual people that made up that occupation and I just I loved it so much no, I was thinking that this green was like way too dark to be the Reading Rush logo colour and then I cut a new length and look, this is the green that I was going for and that I should have been using and I don't know what this green is, I think it's from my other project but it's like the wrong green, it's so dark so I need to redo all of this, I'm so sad The purple's coming along nicely, it's just this green, why? So today is Wednesday, which means it is day three of the reading rush and I am about a third of the way through my second book, which is Bound for Murder. I'm kind of enjoying it. The writing style is very descriptive, which I find for me gets in the way of the author's voice, but I'm pushing on because I really want to know if the story is any good. And like I said before, this is my first ever cozy mystery, which is really cool. And it's also SFF Pit today, which is an event on Twitter where authors can pitch to agents and editors in the hopes of getting their book represented. Because usually the agent will like it and then you send them a query and say that you were sent from a Twitter competition, essentially. So you get, you're allowed 10 tweets, one per hour, for one project. And I've come up with three, but like, querying or pitching your book is the hardest thing to do. It's so hard, especially since my book has two main characters and they both have very different paths, I guess, at points. I mean, they, they're together for a large portion of the novel, but they do separate occasionally and they have very different things to learn and come from very different places. So it's really hard to pitch it. Like, I really need to see pictures from people who have done this. In a tweet, though. In a tweet. In a tweet. So what I thought I would do is a bit different. So the first tweet, I'm doing a tweet from uh, entirely as though the book is written from Tiana's point of view. And then the second tweet is entirely from Eliza's and then the third tweet joins them together. And I'm hoping that will be enough to display the difference. So my first one will say, Tiana will do anything to escape temple slavery and find her husband. When she uncovers a plot to murder a priestess, she rescues her, only to be trapped when the city gates are locked. Surrounded by thieves, Tiana must decide what she is willing to do. Nope. What she will risk for freedom. I didn't have enough characters for the other option. Then we have, life in the temple is orderly. A place Eliza feels safe, comfortable. If only someone didn't want her dead. With her power to heal gone and her escape blocked, Eliza will need to find out who she is before she freezes to death or is captured by the temple. It's so hard. I don't know how people do this. Anyway, it doesn't start till two and it's now 12 and I really want some toast. So I'm gonna get some toast and I'm gonna sit here and read my book. That's the plan. Good morning. It is Thursday, which means it is a day four of the reading rush and I still have only finished one book. I'm really hoping though today to finish Bound for Murder, which is the cozy mystery. And I think that that will take me only, according to Kindle, it will only take me about half an hour. Uh, I was going to push and try and finish it yesterday, but then it was like 10.30 and my partner went to bed and I was like, yeah, maybe I should just wait for tomorrow. And then I'm going to pick up the graphic novel I talked about, The Android's Dream of Electric Sheep. So hopefully that's an easy two books today finished. And then for some reason, I really want to pick up Sense and Sensibility because that's an easy read. So that's what I'm gonna do. But I might first try and finish one of the kids' books. I'm not sure about this plan. I'm not sure why my brain has decided that Sense and Sensibility is a fast read, but there we have it. <laughs> uh, but yes, at least two books today, hopefully uh, two and a half. Let's get to it. What a difference a ring light makes. Boom, boom, boom. So I finished my second book of the readathon, which was Bound for Murder. Uh, I would give this one a three stars, I think. I thought I could see the love that it had been worked with, and I thought that the plot was kind of interesting, but a lot of things didn't really make sense for me. To me, like for example, the 
Okay, spoilers while I have my hand up. Uh, for example, there was a... someone... <laughs> the vaguest of spoilers. Someone was missing and no one knew that they were dead, but then the family knew that they were dead because the police had told them that they were dead, but then the police didn't know that they were dead. Yeah, so uh, very confused and it was okay. The writing style was overly... Um, it was too much writing style for my tastes, but that's a personal thing. So if you're interested in uh, murders, I would recommend checking out the series. This is the fourth book, and I think that it would definitely be better to start with the first book, uh, because the author brings up a lot of things that have happened further, you know, before in the series, so it doesn't really stand... Oh, So it doesn't really stand alone. Uh, and there were lots of like... Yeah, I know. Anyway. A lot of the time, um, the author would like the main character would think something and then immediately someone else would ask it. Like there was a lot of repetition like that. For example, at one point a phone rings and the, the theme tune is really important. And the main character thinks, oh, it's really weird that that is the ringtone. And then immediately like afterwards, someone's like, oh, isn't it really weird that that's the ringtone? Don't you think it could be because of this? And it's like, you just said that. I hate repetition. But anyway, I'm done. I finished it. On to the next one. And we are only halfway done with the tea. The important update that you guys are here for. So I finished this graphic novel um, mainly because half of it or is about the author um, rather than about the book. And it's sort of like kind of a biography, but I don't feel like this novel did anything. I don't feel like I have read the novel in this graphic novel. I feel like this is maybe part one or if the novel finishes there, that's really weird, because maybe it does, I don't know, but like, nothing happened? I decided to pick up Frogged, and I actually finished it, so that was a really good choice actually, because it means that I am now 4 for 4 in the reading rush. Uh, this is the story about a princess who is really struggling to be a princess and she kisses a frog that she finds because she wants to help him, you know, get rid of the curse and ends up being transformed into a frog herself and kidnapped. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this was fun. It was a middle grade. It was, you know, it was fun. That's about all I can say for it. But because I finished that, I now believe I am overdue for this behemoth of sense and sensibility. reading Rush Readathon and I am still tackling my fifth book which is Sense and Sensibility. I don't think I showed you guys this yet but I finished my reading Rush uh, cross stitch. Isn't it cute? I love it. I love it. All right so it is the end of the reading Rush. I managed to read five of seven books and complete six of seven prompts so let's have a look at how I did. So for my book with purple on the cover I read the graphic novel, the first graphic novel of Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. I actually requested Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, the book, but this is what I got. So this is what we read. <laughs> for my uh, for my title, which has more than five words, I chose the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. And oh my gosh, am I glad I did. This book was a delight. It was wonderful. So now that I've read it, I can give you a more kind of, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about how awesome this book was. Uh, so now that I've read it, I can give you a proper synopsis of what it is about. So it is about this author who is kind of like between books, she doesn't really know what she's going to write about, and then she gets a letter from a man on Guernsey who cites the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, thanks her for a book that somehow he got that was second-hand in, her, you know, that she had written her name and address in from before, and asked if she knew any book recommendations for him. And then she goes you know, she starts this correspondence, the entire book is told in letters, you get to see all of these beautiful characters being developed and the storyline, and it's just wonderful. I highly recommend this book. It is wartime, it's set on the Isle of Guernsey during the World War II, when the Nazis occupied it, so it can be a bit heart-wrenching, but it is a beautiful tale, and it's so... I just feel like all of these people are alive and I know them, so you definitely should read this, like, definitely. It's a short book as well, and it's just wonderful. Then for a book with a non-human character, I read Frogged. 
This is about a princess who is struggling to be princessly and then kisses a frog, that, a talking frog that she finds because she wants to make him into a prince again. Turns out he wasn't a prince and she's now a frog and she has to solve that problem. It was all right. I would give it a three stars. It was a pretty average middle grade. I didn't like the ending for some reason. There was a bit more romance than there should have been in a middle grade, but still I enjoyed it. I thought it was cute and it made me laugh a lot. The princess's mother has given her a book on how to become a good princess. And as you can see, there are sarcastic little notes like a princess ought to be fearless. That's just crazy. The only people who are fearless are people who have no imagination. It was all right. It was easy to read. I read it in a day, um, but it, yeah my in one place book i chose bound for murder this was a cozy mystery main character's best friend is running for mayor when a skeleton is found on there on her grandparents's farm and she has to work out who the skeleton was and who is now going around killing the killing um hippies <laughs> essentially old people who used to be hippies in the 60s it was all right it wasn't the best novel i've ever read by a long stretch after reading it i found that it was number four or five in the series. It was an arc, so some of the issues maybe worked out, but I felt like it could have done with some significant editing. As I said before, there were lots of places where it was where, where plot points were repeated. I felt the plot line was also very simple, and the twist wasn't guessable. So yes, um, I read it, and it was good. I would give it a 3 stars, maybe a 2.5. The final book I read for the reading rush was Sense and Sensibility, and I think this was my downfall, because after reading this, I wanted to do zero reading on Saturday or Sunday, and I definitely could have finished another book, at least, if I hadn't like pushed myself so hard to finish Sense and Sensibility, but there you go. Sense and Sensibility was my pick for read a book and then watch the movie adaptation. I read Sense and Sensibility, and honestly, I was very disappointed by it. Uh, there was no plot, there was no action, it didn't really do anything. Um, for the first half, there was nothing going on, except for like endless parties and new people being introduced and it definitely wasn't one of Austen's best works. However, I then watched the film and it was so much better. They gave the character of Margaret a personality which she lacked in the books, not because, you know, the, the character here didn't have that personality, but because it was left kind of like to influence, in inference. And then they gave the romantic heroes a lot more romance and I just, I didn't enjoy Sense and Sensibility. I fell in love with the film Sense and Sensibility. So if you have a chance to watch it and it is on Netflix for Europe, then I would recommend doing that. And those are the five books that I read for the reading rush. I started The Forgotten Past, which is my pick for debut novel, although this also goes for debut novel, so it's good. And I didn't manage to read a book that I'd meant to read last year, unless you count like any of the classics, I guess, because they're always on my reading list. But these things happen. Um, I hope you guys had a wonderful reading rush. If you participated, let me know how many books and prompts you got down below. And I will see you guys next week. Don't forget to hit like if you like, and subscribe if you want to see more from me. I'm Kat, this is the place where I talk. because I have been working on this one, which is upside down.